How do you check your car tyre pressures? This video is aimed at anyone who wants to learn the whys and wherefores about your tyre pressures and I shall deal with the common questions that people have about checking tyre pressures. So stay tuned and let me show you how. Why do I need to check my tyre pressures? A question on many new drivers lips. Put simply, the amount of air in the tyre, which is expressed as pressure, affects the shape of the tyre. Primarily at the bottom where the tyre contacts the road, because that's the bit that carries the weight of the car. And the best possible grip and handling is obtained when the contact patch with the road across, across the width of the tyre is flat. And that flatness is affected by the pressure. And all other things being equal, pressure is the number one factor that affects this. Number two is the weight of the load in your car. How do I know the correct pressure? First of all, look in your handbook. All, all handbooks that come with new cars all have a page or two about the tyre pressures, what the pressures should be according to different load conditions and different sizes of tyre that are available with that car. For a ready reckoner, you'll find a label on your car in one of several different places. Inside the glove box, stuck inside the door shut of the B pillar of the front doors is another area, or inside the fuel flap. The label usually gives the basic pressure information for unloaded and fully loaded condition. How do I know if my tyres need air? Now that we know that we need the correct amount of air, and why, a sensible question. The first, and probably the most difficult way, is visually. None of us would have any problem identifying a flat tyre. This tyre is correctly inflated, and as you can see, well, you can't see the bulge. It's so slight. This tyre, on the other hand, is 5 psi below the tyre on the other side of the car. But I think you'll agree, if you look at the bottom of the tyre, you cannot tell. And 5 psi is enough to affect the handling and grip capabilities of the tyre when you're out on the road, particularly in a tricky situation. So realistically, for the vast majority of us who are not tyre engineers or have superman vision, using a tyre pressure gauge regularly is the only way we can check the pressures of our tyres and maintain them at the correct level. But hang on, I hear you cry. What if I have TPMS? Do I still need to check my tyre pressure? Emphatically and absolutely, yes you do. While it's true that there are some very sophisticated TPMS systems out there, on, on typically on expensive cars, for the vast majority of us, the TPMS system is really an emergency warning system. It's only there to warn you of a developing situation whilst you're out on the road. It's not a substitute for regular maintenance and checks that it is your duty as a license holder to carry out. So let's get right down to the hub of it. How do I check my tyre pressures? We do that with a tyre pressure gauge. Now there are many different types of tyre pressure gauge. This is the traditional stick type. My grandfather bought me this when I got my first car some 38 odd years ago. These really are the very best type of pressure gauge, but there are many types available, including uh, digital ones. The distinct disadvantage with the digital one, of course, is that it needs batteries. And you can bet that the one time that you spot your tyre is visually soft and you need to check it, your battery has run out. But how do we do it? A tyre pressure gauge has always got an end like this, which when we remove, once we've removed the cap from the valve, we press onto the valve, square and firm. With this type of gauge, we can read the pressure in a variety of units around the stick that comes out. In this instance, 36 and a bit. If you've got a digital pressure gauge, you'll have the same kind of end or the same kind of hole, and you'll do exactly the same thing. The pressure will appear in a display and you can just read the numbers off. Useful information though, and, and a caution, always check your tyre pressures when the tyres are cold. That's best done in the morning before you've done any driving during the day. If you must do it in the evening or after driving, allow the car to stand for two hours, is Michelin's recommendation, and then te test the pressure. So we know what the pressure in the tyres should be, we've checked that on the tyre placard, and we've measured the actual pressure in the tyre. So we compare the two values. If the pressure in the tyre 
is correct and matches that which is supposed to be in the tyre from the chart, we don't need to do anything else. We can put the cap back on and leave it alone. What if the pressure in the tyre is a little too high? Let, let's say the weather has warmed up over the last couple of weeks. The way we do that is to press the little button in the middle of the valve. These stick type pair gauges happen to have a nicely shaped end which allows you to do that very easily. Let a little out at a time and check the pressure again until the pressure is correct. Don't worry if you're new to this and find it a bit difficult at first, it'll get a lot easier with practice. But what if we need to put some air in the tyre to pump it up? Well that's where you need a pump. Now traditionally people would have used a foot pump, picture of one here. Personally I prefer a stirrup pump, I find it's much easier. Simply connect it to your valve, lock it on with the locking lever and pump away. Now there's usually a gauge on most pumps, use that gauge as a guide only. Most gauges on most pumps I have found to be inaccurate. Again with practice you'll get to know your pump and your tyre and how many pumps it takes for each PSI you need. Release your pump head, pull it off the valve and use your pressure gauge to check the pressure again. One of the reasons I like this stirrup pump is I can carry it in the boot. I've fitted to it um, a connector that goes to uh, Schrader and Presta valves, which means I can use it for my car and also for my mountain bikes. If you prefer, you could buy a small compressor instead. This one was only about £20, really quite cheap, and I've had it for, gosh, 10 years. Plug it into the power socket in your car. You might need to turn the ignition on to, do, to uh, get power. Connect the air lead to your tyre. Most have a screw-on connector rather than a press-on connector like the uh, manual pumps. And simply then switch on. Again, most compressors will have a gauge. Again, use that as a guide. Again, you, again with practice, you'll get to know how long you need to run the pump for to get, to get say, 5 PSI at a time. How often should I check my tyre pressure? Well, the AA recommends fortnightly or before a long or heavily loaded journey. Something I've done over the years is got into the habit of checking my tyres at a weekend when I'm not working. If, for example, you're a member of a sports team and you regularly go training, maybe check your tyres before you go training when your car's still cold. Or even every Monday lunchtime at work, if you're able to park in a works car park that's close to your office. We're creatures of habit, so find yourself a routine. That's the easy way. Then it tends not to get forgotten. If you got value from this video, please give it a thumbs up down by the title and I shall see you next time.